All right, everyone, welcome back. Day four, uh, we want to go ahead and talk a little bit about automation tools. In the previous sessions, we were looking at how the overall QA process or SDLC and STLC works, especially in an agile environment. environment. And we also have looked at how we can do estimations for test effort that we perform. So that was some certain things that we learned. Then we went about why not automation? Why is manual important? We know that teaching a robot is not easy. We cannot rely on them completely. Do they need supervision, which is again a down drawback? They cannot do certain activities that humans can do. Can be expensive to put in place and humans may lose jobs. So these are the drawbacks that any automation is there for. <clears throat> what is for sure through automation? I think this is what we mean here. <laughs> All right. Is it'll be faster. It'll be more efficient. It won't get tired. You can build it once and reuse it consistently. reusable with minimal changes. If it requires more than minimal changes, then the framework itself is not right or the approach itself. Uh, put in one place accurate. So primarily we said these are the thumb roots team. ERA easy to remember and easy to elaborate when you go to interviews. It needs to be efficient than a human. We should be able to reuse it multiple times and we should be able to rely on it that it's accurate. I have a certain amount of trust on it. And the issue that we face typically with manual testing is that every release we have to do all of these activities repeatedly. Almost 90% may be the same. 10% may be the different scope or new scope. So how can we keep doing it manually every time every two weeks? Earlier when there was waterfall models, it used to be a six month cycle and that was fine, but now it's tough. So then came automation tools. And automation tools when we talk about. Are pretty basically learn. plus do plus report. So they learn what to do. We have to teach them. OK. And. When I said teach. Code also as to what it has to be done. When I say do the execution has to be performed. And monitored can't blindly rely on it right till we know that it reaches a mature level and there is a something very important team. I don't know if I put it here ROI. Return on investment. On automation. Framework. Or tools. So when we invest when we buy or um, hire people to do a project. There is a cost to it. So when will we be able to recover those costs in the sense that benefits are more than the cost and typically we'll say that within three three to six months. Automation tools. Must be able to. Start showing. A solid ROI. Otherwise they'll go back on to human trusted methodologies. All right, so. Learn is for example, you have to teach the tool which is very dumb. By itself, it will follow your orders. It will then execute them 
you have to monitor it and then report as to analyze and raise a defect not everything may be a real defect it could be automation failure page load failure so many other things could creep into it but those are the three stages team that is very important for automation tools they need to learn we need to be able to do and we need to be able to report execution monitored and customization we'll talk about this a lot this is a keyword team okay all right why selenium why hp qtp can we talk a little bit about it for about two three minutes i want to take a paint brush and talk about hp qtp team so long back and team please take this as notes i'm going to not write the notes for you so i'm assuming that you would be able to do some of this uh, there used to be something called as a mercury win runner oops so bad at it and there is to also be a mercury load runner and then hp acquired mercury and came up with qtp and it retained this name as load runner there was also a um, test director which became alm qc quality center and alm mercury test director now qtp became very popular team in mid 2000s okay and let me tell you why it's a very very important thing and believe me i really love qtp for what it has it was called as a quick test professional and it basically number one thing is it had a ide built-in integrated development environment you could record tests and run tests. You could store objects in something called as an object repository and then have a shared object repository which was global. And you could also use something called as an object spy to find details about what we are doing. And for some of you, most of your team, if you're not aware, it's just the different details about it. It can wor work for web applications and a lot of desktop applications that are built using, um, you know, regular Java or .NET or any other application technologies, C language and so on. It uses VB script as the scripting language to make any modifications to the programs that you write it talks about actions that is like keywords they talk about data tables which is like a data driven framework uh, they have recovery scenarios to be able to come out of certain things they have inbuilt inbuilt exception handling they have inbuilt um descriptive programming not inbuilt but it's a languaging it's descriptive programming is basically where i want to be able to identify an element without using my object repository i just use object spy i get the details and i manage it as a parameter it's what we call as element identification and it had some amazing reports html based reports and in fact forgetting what are the reports it had and there were plenty with it can anyone tell me what was the drawback for such an amazing tool that selenium came up in late 2000s early 2010s and kind of slowly started taking up the market 
why was this tool so uh, popular with everything built into one shell? Leslie, sure, um, I'm going to give you, give me a second. I think, yeah. So there were browser limitations. There was a license fee associated with it. And it was not open source. So we could not do much beyond it. Everything that VB script could do, it could handle. But then Selenium came up as one of the most open source tools team. So whatever QTP can do, Selenium wanted to replicate it. But Selenium did it differently. Let me store this. All right. Any questions, anyone so far? Yeah, open source means everyone, everyone, everyone can use it. Now, what did Selenium do? And let us be very honest, team, what it did and what it expected us to do. So now you'll understand. On the side, I'll write QTP or UFT team which is with micro focus right now. I'm sorry, I didn't mention it that time. It is right now with micro focus. They have bought it over from Q, um, HP about a few years back, two, three years maybe. It's an all-inclusive tool in one box. Now comes Selenium and says, all right, I can do certain things. Three most important things that Selenium can do. One, it has got something called as a extremely simple IDE. Extremely simple, like a bare minimal integrated development environment. I'm going to use this word very often team. And it basically helps us to sit in one platform and do certain things, activities. So that helps us to build projects or run scripts or write down things, everything nicely integrated. So it's a tool that helps us to do our work better. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going dry. All right, so next came what we call as a web driver now. Earlier, there was a Selenium server with RC called as remote control where we had to manually start a server and run our tests. Okay, web driver basically said that for each type of a browser like Chrome or Firefox, Safari, Opera, IE, Edge. Um, did I miss anything? <laughs> I'll have different driver files. So we can test web based applications only there's a big drawback it cannot do desktop applications so what's the difference team i'm not focusing too much on the differences but desktop app versus web app can you tell me everyone i would love to unmute so you can give me your answers raise your hands please what do we classify or as a desktop app and what is a web application? Anyone with answers, please raise your hand. I would love to hear them. We're not talking about mobile apps yet. Selenium does not directly work 
on mobile apps and we call link this as native okay so we'll get to what's native all right let's see fiza and then shanti and neha you know desktop apps are um like on my computer right now they would be adobe lightroom or paint application you know those are uh in my opinion i would uh, define them as desktop app. Web applications are entirely uh, mm -hmm. web-based or iCloud-based, like, you know, going to Google, accessing your Gmail account. Going to Google? How do you go uh, to Google? A Gmail account. Okay, going through Google Chrome. Going through Google Chrome. Yeah, using any... Um, you know uh, those browsers internet browsers do correct thank you fiza anyone else please yeah uh, like, uh, can i have everyone else on mute by one second and this noise is from yes go ahead please neha yeah so uh, desktop apps are like uh, which are there on your uh, desktops like the uh, you access the Microsoft files or uh, anything on your desktops. Whereas mm -hmm. on the web apps, like you need an internet to access any of the browsers or uh, any app you want to access to. Like the WebEx that we are doing, we need the internet for that. So those are like um, web apps. Yes, that's nice. I totally forgot about we need internet for it. <laughs> True. Who else, please? And team, it's okay to keep your hands raised. Ibrahim, did I? I did unmute you. Can you try and mute yourself? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Ibrahim. Yeah, uh, desktop application is a computer program that runs locally on a computer device, uh, as in a desktop or a laptop, whereas a web application needs an internet connection or, uh, um, or a network to work properly. And also a web application can be used by anyone who has access to the web browser. That's the difference between a desktop wow. and a web application. Very nice. Anyone can I say from anywhere? Yes, uh, I can. The, yes, please go ahead, Zai. I can edit. I mean, um, desktop mm -hmm. is like a local, uh, and uh, web would be the distributed environment uh, outside the your. You know. Yep. I, I just wanted to add one more thing in sure. the desktop that uh, it's like private. Nobody else can access that. And uh, whereas the web, like um, somebody mentioned that it can be accessed by anyone and anywhere through the app. You can access your Gmail account from anywhere if you get the internet mm. access. Very nice. So what does it mean? What else can we say? Which requires more security? In that case. Nazima. Uh, hi, I just like to add for the desktop app. Mm -hmm. So anything like a, like a software, we have to download certain softwares in order to access That's that so application. Yeah. Download yeah. and any software uh, and exe file, which is in the form of exe file to software. So yeah. after you download, what do you do? Install. 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 Yeah. That's a big difference. Once we install that, we have to install that application or it has to be set up. 
Yes. Actually, for that matter, my Enyot does not need installation. It needs setup, install or setup locally. How about web application? No uh, download. No download, no software required, anything we no can install. access through internet. Yeah. Correct. Very clear. See, I think that's how our concepts get more and more clearer team. With such kind very nice answers. I'm so happy. Did I not unmute anyone? Anyone else? I, I forgot. I wanted to add one or two, then I forgot because I got one or two which I did not expect. Like, you know, network. I forgot totally that web applications always require the network to be up. So, as simple as that, any application that you need to download locally onto your machine and run is called a desktop app. Sometimes, desktop desktop app may require internet to work correct example skype microsoft word or excel will work offline but skype will only work online or whatsapp web and so on uh, but whatsapp web is not a desktop app i'm sorry <laughs> So that's that's the right classification team. So that is very important. Now, what is on the same? Let's talk about mobile apps. Now, what are mobile apps then? You're all self muted. So um, mobile apps, the apps that uh, function on mobiles and there are two types of um, like Android and iOS platform. Usually the applications are developed for Android and iOS. Uh, Any other mobile. platforms? You know, usually when I'm downloading yeah, applications, right. these That's are the true. two. <laughs> That's true. No, absolutely right. There's also Windows um, version. Sorry, yes. Why should I write? Yes, please. Mobile applications, are, um, they are a sort of application that are specifically designed uh, to run on mobile devices, um, like a smartphone or a tablet computer. They can also be small software units that has limited function, but can still be managed by users with quality services and experiences. Wow, you went too fast. I can't type that fast. Oh, uh, can you hear me? Is it okay? I'll speak slowly. Is it okay? No, uh, no, no. You were speaking perfect. I couldn't type that fast. Small okay, software uh, units with limited functionality. All right. I said a mobile application is a type of application that is specifically designed mm. to be run on a mobile device. Mm. And the device can be a smartphone or a tablet computer. Computer as well? A tablet computer. Tablet like computer. Tablet, yeah. Okay. Tablet is fine. All right. Every everyone, every device these days have a computer inside them. <laughs> and a mobile application can also be a small software unit with a limited function, not like a, a, a browser function like you could on a computer or, or, or a laptop, but it has got a limited function, but it is like a small software. It's also classified as a mobile app, but it can still be managed to provide users with quality services. Wow. So I think what it primarily means and what you're saying, if I can rephrase also, is like the summarizing most essential and packaging it. Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah. For quick and easy access to users. Yes, yeah, primarily. Like yes. Mobile banking 
or anything. Yeah. They may not all have all the features, and that's a brilliant yeah. point. You're very, very, very well said. I'm so happy. Thank you. Welcome. Did I not unmute anyone else? This is so interesting. Yes, please, Lata. Uh, hi. Uh, actually, mobile, uh, it has like three types. We can do the testing in three ways, like web mobile applications, and we can do on a native and hybrid. In in web-based uh, application, is just like uh, in the uh, mobile, just going, if it's a iPhone, going to the Safari and just enter the URL and just browse whatever you want, Gmail, and do the testing. And if you go for the native, like we need to download some uh, app in the mobile, actually, and testing on it, actually. And a hybrid means is combination of both, actually, we can do in the mobile. Um, there are some tools we can use to do the web applications, like a Perfecto tool. And it's like simulator. Using that, uh, we can simulate like uh, we can't in the test, real time testing. We can't do. We will not have all versions like for iPhone or i Android. In that case, we'll sim. They, they will provide some sim versions in that, and based on that, we can do the testing. And if you want to do the real testing, then we need to use our, for connecting the directly the phone and do the test to the system, and we can do the testing too. Like uh, sending the messages, taking the phone calls, those concepts. How do you connect to the phone? Uh, not like uh, just like uh, I'm not sure about that, uh, but mm -hmm. we can connect multiple it. Ways. Sure connect it. Multiple ways. Oh yes, very just nice, like very nice. Using the charger, like connecting the iPhone onto the laptop. Yeah, perfect. So web applications. In the sense, so let us say we have a mobile device, smartphone. So if I want to go to google.com or you know, a lot of websites, itlearn.com or I don't know, kitco.com, whatever you want to do, cnn.com, you will look at the, you go to a browser, Safari or Chrome in your win, um, device and do it. Native app is an important one team. This is where, so here what is important, the resolution size or how much dimensions in which, the dimension for which it can show the image correctly. So we call about responsive websites. So for example, I don't know which one. Um, Go.itlearn may be responsive for sure. So this is a web view. Let's go to the private one. So this is a web view. Now if I double click this and kind of, you know, I'm losing content. See, do you see how it's resizing? There's no more menu bar here. And then if I go down, I should see a menu bar. I don't see. Where is that menu bar? It should be with Teachable. <laughs> Let's try another one. This is crazy. Um, any suggestion, please? Web app? CNN? So if, if you just click on the where the IT Learn is near to it. So yeah, I didn't want to show the, It shows the menu bar. It doesn't show like the lines or the dots, but the, uh, it shows that it's been there. Because on the mobile, if we access, that's how it comes. I'm sorry, now I got it, what you said. So if you go here, one second, everyone. Yeah, yeah if, to, if you resize it, make it small. Yeah, so now click, go a little far away from the IT loan and then click on the right hand side. Go right, more right. More right, <laughs> your arrow has to go more right. Yeah, yeah. Just click there, then you click see. The, click the dot. Yeah. Yeah. 
the very right corner and there is a three dot already. you can click yeah. it yeah, yeah i can't hardly see that things are colored oh yeah, now, now you can see now yeah can. sure thank you so the name with cn and c here like for example how it should look on a um mobile device one second team I'm sorry for that. All right. So even if you're here on the page, if you right click and go to a thing called inspect, you'll see it in every browser these days. You should be able to see the screen that basically lets me. Work on the code behind it. If I'm a web developer or something, I want to change the look and feel. I can make quick changes here and see the results here. So it's very friendly tool, not just for the web developers. And we're going to use this inspect very, very, very often all through our sessions going forward team. Now, as part of this right now, I don't want you to worry too much on this code for today. Just this icon here. Do you see that? Toggle device toolbar. It is all about the screen size team. It's very important and that's the most important thing that you know we it's gone uh, we focus on in automation also because the applications will change now see if I click on this um, responsive I can choose any of these phones or dimensions to look at how it looks <clears throat> so this is a full screen mode of it in each phone dimension Um, Karthik, I just wanted to ask if it's correct to say that uh, mobile app is a combination of both the desktop app and uh, web app. Is it correct to say that? No, not at all. No, okay. Mobile app has got nothing to do with either a desktop app or a web app. It okay. can be linked with a web app. All right. But because, and that's called you know, a hybrid app. Mm -hmm. We click the pictures. It's on your phone only. You nobody else yes. can access that. So it is not like like the desktop app, like with the web app, you are accessing the. So app no, it is still. Uh, uh, so maybe you're saying photos is app. Let us yeah. say. Okay. That's working like a local application. It is not a, connected to the internet or cloud. Yes. But if you use Google Photos, then. Mm -hmm. It will connect you to the cloud. Okay. Otherwise, it will stay on your local device only. All right. So that's why they need access even when they do a lot of investigations to the actual device. Everything may not be on the cloud. So they need to access the actual device to get out the call numbers or this or that and so on. Okay. All right. So team, I don't think I have enough volume in me today but any questions please give me a second i'm still having a hard time any questions uh no i was just uh, thinking also the mobile app like uh, we've got different mobile apps like android ios there and you can go to individual os you know a uh, play store to get the app specifically for each operating system like Apple, it has got its own Apple Store for their apps, and OS has got Google Play Store, and uh, that is uh, an example. I also thought I said I will uh, ask. Yep, yeah. and I think that's isn't that only applicable for native apps, and also maybe hybrid apps. Hybrid, okay. That is for both OS and. Uh, okay. Yeah because they need to be downloaded hybrid as well they work so part of it is web-based part of it is very 
native. So native apps is the one where there's a lot of coding involved by the mobile app developers. Here, the regular app developers make the websites responsive. And in hybrid, it's primarily native apps with a little bit connected uh, with certain amount connected uh, amount not amount features as um, serviced through the cloud. <clears throat> Everything is not necessarily into the app and this one requires memory on your local device this one requires memory too and so on i didn't plan to actually go into these team today i thought i'll do something more but primarily going back to the diagram selenium has these three things one is an ide next is called as a web driver and then we have something called as a grid now it only does web app testing it does not do any other testing I'm sorry team I'm having a hard time today okay now grid is nothing but about distributed so we want to do it in different machines over split what I want to do parallel executions or however and it helps me to do that and anything to do with mobile or API and so on we need add-ons and there are plenty of add-ons and the most important reason why it is easy is because selenium will work with java python c sharp what else is their team what are the other languages anyone think ruby ruby, ruby on rails yeah. Pearl? Mocha, Mocha, oh, Mocha, Ruby on uh, Rails, Pearl, Chai, Chai or something they said. <laughs> and mostly object uh, oriented languages like uh, Selenium, WebDriver, goes on object oriented languages popularly. I think most of the standard ones are there available and they add consistent connectors team. And for us, the home would be selenium.dev. So please um, make sure we're working on this website consistently to see what's there. All right, I'm going to close this pop up for now. And let's see. Okay. So web driver, IDE and grid as a way to go about from a learning perspective. We're going to start with IDE team, then web driver and then grid. Now, what's important here is um, it's going to take us a few days. It's going to take us a few projects to be able to explore them really nicely and deeply. So by end of next week, I want to complete Selenium IDV, uh, sorry, IDE, uh, the core Java recap. And I'll, believe me, it will not be too hard because we'll keep on working on it from there on by end of next week, team. So um, what I will definitely ask you to do is download Selenium IDE. Any of you who have not seen or worked with Selenium IDE, and absolutely fine if you have not. I just want to know about it, team. Where is the IDE? There you go. 
So we have this as a plugin or an add on to our browser. It works both for Chrome and Firefox team. So let's check for Chrome. It's already on mine and you can see the icon also here. So that's kind of installed. And all you need to do is click on it to get started. It launch up a small frame window on the side. You can resize it. Hopefully. Let's do this way. And this is where we are. Now, do you remember our test cases that we created? We're going to try and perform some of these actions in the first thing that we will do here, which is one second. Record a test. Save. And. Run. And watch the results. That's what we're going to do. All right. Now Selenium ID. Let's click. Oh, I already clicked on it. Do you see this icon here team now? Let's go there. It is extremely important for us to know how ID works. Selenium ID. Why is it built? What is there in it? And unfortunately, it has no great use beyond that. Um, it's just a very preliminary playground. That's all. But it'll teach us a lot of basics. And that's why I want you all to focus on this as well. So you have a few options team. You can create a new project, blah, blah, blah. There was not so complicated earlier. Um, let's say I'll create a new project. And I'll call this is SFDC salesforce.com. In that, okay, it's already created here. So there's a layout here, team. The way I look at any tool or application, when I see it, right, I break it down into these frames. This is one frame here. There seems to be something here, something else here. Okay, some crowded area out here, and a few features and blank areas here. So I'm not looking at 100 things right now. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five things only. So that becomes easy for me. I don't get confused with, wow, do I have to really learn everything master? No, not really. Now let's go to the first section here. So this is log team. So whatever we do, we'll keep getting generated here. This is reference. What we do, what are we doing? We need any help as to what that things mean is called reference okay the test that we see here whatever we record or create will be stored here for us to execute them these are the commands for us to run the test all of them or one test or do certain more activities on it stop tests or record tests then you can save and do a few things there now the very, very important thing that is there for us, one second, is this area. All right. And I want all of you to master this area team. Any automation tool requires a few things. It's like a waiting for instructions you give it the right instructions it will do the right things you give it the wrong instructions it won't do the right things so we need to be very clear instruct giving in in, um, in giving the instructions i'm sorry one second waiting for instructions so it will it's very obedient in following now, so I'll ask you a question team. So most times if this is the case, whose fault is it? Can you answer me? If the things go wrong. Who's <laughs> writing the instructions. You're right. Thank you. It is the human behind the tool 
who is not giving it the right direction or instruction or backup scenarios and so on i want to teach in such a way that or oh, even if the browser closes or fails and so on recover from it you know i'll try to do something and if there's an exception on it we'll do something else so we need to be very very smart in giving instructions okay now out here the record and run is very simple team record a test means listen selenium i will do few things on an aut aut or an aut team is it a a or an here you can say both an application under test or <laughs> a and probably the best choice if i'm yeah <laughs> a is a better choice and n and n. i think n is the only choice i don't think a is correct grammatically if it comes before a word that starts with a vowel right yes <laughs> there's something like that in grammar i like certain things team that's why i like teaching as well because it makes me explore and go search back some of my fundamentals and i love to be proved wrong as well so that's good to think through okay nice um i will do few things on an application under test and listen selenium i will do few things learn and repeat those steps back to me so that next release i will run your cell script rather than manual so that next is release only or next release onwards i'll say every release from there if it requires little changes i will do it i can do little tweaking so that's the most minimal level of automation team and believe me if you search for any jobs you won't find it that why okay so automation is very simple team the robot needs only two things what to do and where to do if you say um go drive the car it will drive the car you have to tell where you want it to drive the car otherwise it can't start these two words the what has to be done and where it has to be done is critical in the command section team uh, sorry in this outline what i did this red box the command is the what portion what do we want to do like open a browser click a link type a tech email id type a password click on a submit button and so on now i know that i have to perform actions what actions are these now i'll ask you this question team they may look very fundamental but they're important robot will try to simulate or sometimes emulate the human so what does that mean what does the human use to communicate with the pc i'm saying computer can you tell me team what do we use to communicate with the pc i want to give it some instructions i want to see something back if it's following my instructions or not you learn a language like uh, with this case you you have that to is back end okay that is like, very back yeah. end. okay that is to create programs so that users can use it 
how do users use it i'm asking very yeah you're right saba very basic how do i communicate with that computer i'm a human i have to communicate with the computer what do i use hardware you go to, you go to the website open it click it submit it ah, so do whatever do you, action sorry. you need to do what you do just you have to input them? instructions you just have to input instructions and the computer will just pick it up it will convert mm -hmm. to high level machine language yes, right. and, yeah absolutely perfect so machine language something is there at the back and it will pick it up but what do i use at a very basic level what mm -hmm. are those come how do i hardware give those and task hardware okay what are the hardwares you use a mouse to you know maneuver the uh, mm -hmm. arrow click on uh, different applications and then you know uh, there is a task defined like for example if i click on microsoft word graphical user interface inputs right yeah. these are three things team mouse peripherals, keyboard and the screen yeah. peripherals of, yeah correct but now my robot is not something that looks like a human and who's going to sit on my machine with fingers and eyes and do that, correct? Yeah. So it's like a web server or something or API or something. So they depend on instructions. Like type on keyboard, click on x y coordinates on the screens right click enter on keyboard and so on so those instructions that tool should be able to understand selenium is a master at these functions so I don't have to make a human being to, or human like robot to do it. It wants to do it all by itself. So all I have to do in this case, where am I back here? My command is what I want to do, like click, type, C, right click, enter, escape, all these things team. But again, it's just mouse, a keyboard and a screen that's it and that's how we give commands where do we do it on the machine on the screen are we talking about mobile device here no are we talking about apis on anything here no only web-based applications web-based ui that have a logo links and so on that can be opened on browser that is a significant limitation for selenium but it's popular nowadays because a lot of applications are web-based. So command is what we want to do. Target is where we want to do on that web application. Am I expecting to see the logo here or here or here? Where do I want to see it? Should I click on extensions here or is there anywhere else that word? Should I be able to type what i want into a field somewhere here or no those are the things that we want to be able to do on a specific location value is very simple thing team it's an additional information let us say you want to type a username or a password or you want to enter a weight or a height or a distance then you have data or information that you want to put that goes into value these are the three building blocks. Now let's do a quick recording. I'll not take more time with the theory um, and we'll find out. So this is this is something I'm not an expert at team. And I don't mind saying it because I wanna be more on Selenium web driver, frameworks, grid level than IDE, but it's a great learning platform. I don't know what I did. I just created a project called SFDC. It says test. I'll say add new test. 
and I'll call it as TC001 and say add. What was my test K001 just in case? Uh, try and. Oh, just the UI part. I don't think I can do that yet. I don't know how to. No, I do, but not to you yet. I'll do TC002, which is an incorrect login. Okay, so I'll rename this. It's pretty much any tool these days team are built for an average user. You don't have to be a rocket scientist for it. You just have to make sure that you can see nicely pixel level. What is where patiently spend time and do certain things. All right. So right now there's nothing here. I'm going to click on record. And here we got to provide that login of the application where we're going to go to. So I'm going to go to login dot sales force dot com and say slash start recording. Now that becomes the most important one that will go here as the base URL team. Okay, it will come up here. Now here, let me not use this. Oops. Did you notice what all is generating? Any clicks that I'm doing or double clicks, it is capturing a team. I'm going to delete this and write a KK at Vercasa.com and tab. And as we continue to do it, it is capturing those three important things. What I want to do, which is the command, like open, resize the window like I did, click on something with a target target is what we'll focus on in element identification team how to recognize these elements it says there's an id called username that's what it's referring to here and then click double click why because i clicked on it a few times and then again click then i typed in it what did i type in it kk at varkasa.com now to the password see again i'm clicking on it it's coming up so these are additional steps team that be one doesn't require but i'm not sure of it so see now i typed a random password i clicked on login at this point it should say that oh you know what i don't recognize you maybe hopefully and now comes the portion since it says selenium id is recording here i can right click and do you see this option now called Selenium IDE, which was not earlier there with it because this browser is open with the Selenium IDE. As I take my mouse over it, there are certain things I can do here, team. Certain things called assertions, like making sure. We'll do these assertions, but at a code level, all right? Store the information that we want into a variable, or text and so on. Verify that I see this specific text every time. That's what I want to do. And that command is gone saying verify text where ID equals error. How do I know? I right click, I say inspect on that text. It'll take me there. It'll say, see, ID equals error. That is the unique identification for it. And what is the message that I want to check there? That this is what I'm expecting to see. Now, that's my end of my test. I'm going to stop my recording. And now I'll close this browser. I don't need this anymore. I have my test created. Let me save this. Uh, okay, C drive trainings. November. Mm. Okay, SFDC. Side file is basically a Selenium ID file team. It I think earlier it used to look like an HTML with a table in it and so on. Uh, they're just doing it different versions. Come on. I don't need you to scan. Did save. It didn't come on. Sorry, give me a second.
Okay. Yes, replace it then. That's fine. Scan whatever you want. All right, team, we've recorded the test. Now let's run it. For running this test, all you need to do is click on this run. It's going to play the current test. If I have multiple test cases like this recorded and saved, then I can run them all using this. Right now, only one. So let's run this. So it's going to go. See, it typed in what we wanted and it performed all of those actions, team. Hopefully. Now, let's observe also what's happening here. Let me try and move this here. Oopsie. Did you see all this green, 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 green? That means it was trying to attempt a step and it had no problem in attempting that step. Everything came good as is. So this test case is a pass. That is what it will show to us in log that everything is okay, 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 okay. Now, for example, here I go. This step, verify text is the command. So what we see here, command is here, target here, value here. Description is basically our notes, what we want to write additionally. Please check your name. So I'll change this to please verify your name and password. Earlier it passed, correct? Let's see what will happen this time. And I'm more interested in my test, so I'll click here. See, everything is click, 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 green, green. It's coming here, verify text. It's waiting for the page to load, team. Once the page loads, right, it'll be able to do the verification as well. Ah, see, now it says failed. And that's what it is about. Verify, please. Check it was. You need to do uh, to make sure everything is good. So this is, why do I have to replace it each time? Okay. Now this is executing. I'll say all tests. There was this. I think I can copy and paste this. No? Duplicate, yes. Login incorrect. And I'll say login incorrect. This one, rename it to underscore error. Okay. So the first one, I'll not pick, keep any mistake. The second one, I'll go down. And here, oops, instead of check, I'll say verify. Now I'm going to run this entire test suite. There's no TC001. Let me delete that delete and then untitled i don't have this delete let's keep things clear and run the entire suite now so it should run both of them team for us it'll finish one and it'll go to the next it should mostly become green now what happened let's see yep it's all done now this one, it's waiting for the page to load. We're gonna explore more team later. Um, that's primarily what it is for today. It's primarily easy to create a test, but how do we run it? When do we run it? What test data do we pass? How, so there are a lot of other challenges that will come to it slowly. Team, no other lecture from me today, uh, but, before I take any questions from anyone, please, I want you all to visit go.itlearn here. Go to our courses. I should go because if I'm admin, it will not show me. Anyone having questions, please let me know. Currently, all of your members, their team, I did not get a chance to take out or filter them based on this. So the first three videos hit here, day four will come after this. There is a quiz one. I want you all to log in and please finish this quiz so that it's there with your membership. All right, everyone. Log in and do it, please. Um, there are a few nice questions Ramu prepared. Uh, just to recap on what we learned through day one to three. All right. Any questions for me for today? Otherwise, I'll see you on Monday.
most of some of you are unmuted if anyone else needs to be unmuted please raise your hand rohini hello kartik this is rohini from in india hi rohini uh till now i didn't take any membership i want to take jpac membership uh sure um uh, i'll call you back i'll have someone call you offline on that rohini uh okay but uh, i have ca tried calling the number on website that is indian number but it is switched off i didn't okay. reach you that's why sorry no problem um i'll come back to you give me a day's okay. time okay okay my okay, team thanks. is trying to reach out to all the members in india as well we will do that okay okay thank you thank you rohini hi kartik this is lata hi lata Uh, hi Kati, this program is for six weeks. No, it's like a, we need to we need to register. Like a, it's like free course or like we need to get some. It's not a free course. Um, I've sent emails also on the okay. pricing. You did not get it. I didn't notice actually. Okay, just check. If you didn't get it, send an email. You'll get okay. the details because the, now I have mm -hmm. to get into creating the Skype groups and all okay. those. I can only do it with the members. Okay, so, this like uh, okay. The free class is for only for few days. Ha, huh, we're almost done. I think from next coming week we'll go with only members now. So, uh, uh, Karthik, yes, I, please. Yeah, I, I just want to ask. Um, I just joined a group not long ago. I think uh, I joined the last uh, the study yesterday or oh, the day before yesterday, and uh, with a manual training. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what you've thought is that the only thing we need to know in manual then you can be no. a manual tester no not okay. at all there's a lot more uh, to it but um there's going to be two or three sessions that i'm doing along with ramu where we will go in in depth on every term and what they mean in manual testing okay, okay. because it's very theoretical it's a process based we'll explore a lot through the training but i don't think it is specifically only for manual testing okay all right okay. and then okay. um where have we got a uh, i think you did how many days is there if we go on to the ite we're going to find um, the sessions you had for this class Oh yes. So if you go to the website, itlearn. Go. Itlearn, please. That's the new website. Okay. And click on all courses. Okay. November live November 2020. And then we have lecture notes. What I'm doing in the Google Docs. Q and A session is DLC. Uh, third session okay. quiz and today's. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And how how long does the whole course take? Like, is it a year or? It'll take us six, a... seven weeks. Okay, and you're gonna finish SDET. Oh one. yes, because in we have lots weeks. of topics to cover. Correct. Okay, and that that could be completed in six weeks because I know SDET is a lot, yeah. like Kukumba. Yeah. Actually, the fundamental of SDET is. that's someone has been already a software development engineer and who's moving into test okay it's a software development engineer in test so someone who knows the entire application development cycle okay. uh, been at least 5 6 years into it and now wants to get a little bit knowledge on uh, selenium automation frameworks those concepts and okay. be able to contribute that's an as debt so okay. from our perspective we are saying that a lot of coding a lot of ci cd devops frameworks and so on you either an automation architect or you close it to an as debt okay yeah hi kartik this is lata again like yes please. i have a question hybrid actually how that hybrid works actually hybrid mobile like i know it's native means we'll install the app actually in the mobile and we'll do the testing and hybrid means how we do testing actually 
hybrid also you'll have to see there are two ways okay there's the few hybrid apps which you have to install but okay. everything that you're doing is you're seeing a refer nothing but the web version of it on your devices there's no logic or anything in the mobile app itself there's no functionality in it the same so way, like testing. we need to type the URL, we need to do the testing for hybrid. Ah, uh, no, that's a web browser. That's a web web app, more of um, if you're using a browser then. Then I'm not getting how to, for hybrid actually. I'm not clear in that part actually. Um, let's see. A lot of customer apps that we use are hybrid because see. Uh, like for example, WhatsApp is a typical native application. Okay. okay. Hybrid applications have certain amount of um, a mixture of both, I would say. Now, is it an installation necessary or not is a question still. Mm -hmm. Do we need to download and install can be question mark. But it's just that it, can, it supports both the native technologies and the web technologies. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you have certain features like itln.com mobile app is actually a hybrid app. Um, okay. Let me show you. I don't know if it's there. Let's see. I don't think it's there. So if I go here, no, mm -hmm. it's gone. We need to redo this. I think I need to look at it. So it what okay, like this. If my application on my phone is like a banking application, for example, right? Um, hmm. Let me let me get you a better example to um, show you, please. Okay. Any other questions, team? Remind me, please, Lata, if I forget to answer this. Okay. Maybe in the next two, three days, sessions will get to it. Uh, hi, Kartika. Um, just I would like to check uh, for the JPAC membership. Uh, like, is that mm -hmm. is there a job plas placement? Is there right? Is it a hundred percent or uh, it is like well, like whenever we get the opportunity, then uh, we can use that. Um, you're saying 100% no. and, and yeah. opportunity of? Yeah, placing in the job or how it will be? Are you saying a placement commitment or something? Uh, you told, like, I just remember that, like, uh, it's on QA on year. Uh, we can um, bid for some jobs and then, um, like, is it is it the one we are, you are talking about for the no. job placement? No, not no, 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 not at all. JPAC is not a placement by itself. Varkasa Inc. and QA on it can place you. Okay. Um, JPAC is about orienting you towards the job, is to put you into two or three projects where you get hands on exposure, where you can rightly okay. build your resume, mm -hmm. where you can go through two or three mock interviews with us, okay. where you can give. So you, it is a three to six months effort and you prepare your project profile accordingly. Then you get into the market. It could be through us. It could be through any other sources. Okay. okay? Yeah, so, it. yeah. So it's a program. For example, in a week or two, I'll be starting that again for the new batch. There'll be a lot we will do on any art product development. You can also do on QA on air freelancing it's not really taken off qa on it that's why i've been quiet but i think it's a time now hopefully sometime soon okay and another thing is like um for the uh, syllabus um for the regular uh, course uh, you have um, entered the concept of data driven framework uh, keyword driven and then uh, mm -hmm. hybrid framework so on so is this only for the selenium or it's for a uh, mobile as well it's for um, only 
the concept for example these frameworks most of it will be for web some of mm -hmm. it we can also we will be using for api and some of this for performance also mobile app depending a few keywords so it's all about how do we put them together into a practice in the same framework we could be doing ui plus api plus performance plus mobile app okay okay so yeah. the framework is the concept is the same mm -hmm. what where are where is my application hosted it could be different okay how do mm -hmm. i see my application could be different okay and do you guys uh, this is lata again you will help in placement also or only training primarily training team I don't talk too much about placements. I talk a lot about preparing you all. Okay. I get opportunities, but when I get mm -hmm. opportunities, they get over very, very quickly. So that's why I'm not able to promise too much. And like uh, you don't like you'll be teaching mobile and performance remeter. Those things mm -hmm. you'll be covering in detail or just like high level within two weeks, remeter can't be done, no? Not even two weeks. I'm saying two, three sessions. <laughs> That's more than enough for uh, Jamie. Okay. No. Okay. Here's the thing. I think we, as a QA engineer, need to know almost all of these things. There could be a few things that I've added extra to show you how these things work, like API, JMeter, mobile app testing. These may not go into detail, but or even db or sql basics we will go through it database also we can teach for six weeks okay. right so but there are lot all of this now amazon aws you can spend six months on to it and so on yeah. but you need yeah. a great exposure on a lot of them and a lot of depth in certain aspects like okay. frameworks ci cd pipelines jenkins git github um, grid and so on mm -hmm. and then be aware on the other things it should Check be on your out. resume and you should be able to speak very easily about it and you can okay. say i've got limited exposure to it but i know what i know and i'm ready to work on it more plus um, selenium, you'll be focusing full depth in selenium or is that also like high level selenium selenium will go full depth Absolutely. Apart from the remaining or less, just focus on it. Uh, we will focus on it to a certain extent that feels logically fine for us. Okay. And then if we have teams that want to like JPAC teams, that's what they'll do. So now what's going to happen is I'm creating one JPAC team for API, one for JMeter, one for APM. And these three teams are going to be continually continuing to develop on the ENIOT framework. So that's more valuable for the JPAC members than just the theory subjects. So we learn the basics, we'll start working on the projects. That's the idea. Uh, okay. But with the API, you know, it's quite mm -hmm. extensive. Uh, with the API, are we just learning the one with the Postman? Or we, we, we Postman we, we is very simple. We'll do a lot with Java Rest Assured. Yeah, with a bribe. Okay, okay, with yes. our API. And we will extensive. also do a lot of API framework testing. See, on GitHub, okay, we yeah, have a tool called Enyot Runner, Enyot X Runner. And you all should download this tool and use Team. Uh, let me put it into the chat, the link. The source, I will do it once we have contributors for it. And then we have the api html report is another thing the team working on it where was the api one github.com slash mm, it was in i don't know where it is so there's a total thing that we did in for api 
uh, uh, using Java REST assured. So there's there's very interesting things, team. So that's where I want to use the JPAC members to get hands on, and we'll work on them. Okay. JPAC means it's a different course actually. You'll be giving training in depth in a, a, Yes. So and I can ask you this question. Team. It's not a training at all. Number one. It'll start. It's more like a daily scrum meeting. Typically, it will be so. Now, what's the time? It's 6:30 p.m. for me in Pacific. Uh, I plan to do this at maybe 8 a.m. Pacific. I don't know if anyone of how many of you have time in the morning, team. U.S. morning. I'm in UK at the moment. I, I'm based in um, UK, London. So um, yeah. GMT time. So how about morning, the others? Like what time? Morning is like what time? Morning is 8 a.m. Pacific, I was thinking. Plus so I'll be in GMT for GMT. 8, 16, okay. 4 p.m. Okay, that'll be almost, uh, is it 4 p.m., right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I think how, how many? Um, 8 a.m. Pacific is 11 a.m. How many weeks? How many weeks? Oh, it, How many it, days that will go on for that will go on for a long time. So that's an ongoing. Okay. There's project already an project. ongoing project. Uh, members will keep joining them. Okay, I just have to make time then for that because I just want yeah. to develop the experience. So it's it, worth it to have a group. Yeah, it's it's a very interest. It's a very involved program. We have more. We do a lot of mob programming. Um, we share the code. We do very interactive sessions. So there's not oh, teaching okay. there. There's okay. no teaching there. It's just exploration, uh, MOMs and requirements, and what can we do, helping each of us, each other okay. to challenges. And uh, will you require a, a, a sort of level of uh, expertise or understanding think, or skills to join the JPAC? You could start uh, from. What, what I tell people is some members can start as beginners and just piggyback along with the current team members. Okay. And as you improve, you can start contributing within your teams. Your uh, teams are between six to ten people. Okay. And then you keep so working you, within those teams. So you can join any team at all. I mean, if you are a member of JPAT, like any new team, you can just request to be allowed. Uh, correct. Completed? You can correct. Okay. You'll only be working on either API or JMeter or mobile app, but you'll be seeing the presentations from every other group also. All right. Okay. okay. So and you master in one, skills, and you get yeah. the others from others. Correct. Okay. And then if you have enough time, you can go through them, execute them, and get a better idea on those as well and there's also interaction with members like you know like a group if you have you can interact with so other we'll members. have one group for all of us okay. then each of you will have your own groups okay. you may okay. use trello or rike or skype and so on and typically your groups will have a lot of calls between yourselves a lot okay. of documentation okay, works. Can you interact with other groups as well that you are not in, like to reach yeah, out? Okay. Other groups are then the common group, but you have your private groups. Okay. And then when you okay. come together every day when we meet, each group will do the presentations. Okay, that would be nice. Updates because because on what we're doing. Right. Correct. And then I see what we can do more if I can help and so on, reviews, feedback. Amazing. And that's Would all I... going to be on any art. A lot of it will be on any art team because it's a good team product team. and we can continue to build on the product. Uh, with the estates, um, mm -hmm. there is, uh, you know, Docker Kubernetes. Um, it, with the estates, is it that you, you have to have some sort of software development knowledge or software development engineer to be the to add the automation or the debts. Is correct, that something correct, correct. achievable within the framework, within the time correct. framework? Uh, That's a great question. Okay. So 
um, see, ideally speaking, it is not easy because you have to have worked in a application development process. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Any art is a great application. <laughs> I mean, I, I it's my <laughs> so. Uh, you have a web interface for it, which is very, very immense. And then you have a desktop application for it, all built on Java, um, test ng, Java Swing, and so on. So we constantly develop this product. So anyone who's working on any art is not just using the tool to automate, just like what we saw in Selenium IDE. It'll be very similar to this, but a little bit more advanced. Oh, okay. uh, but then how we can customize more and more, integrate CI, CD, all of these things will come into place. So one of the things that you can show that you're part of a product development team for any art. Okay. And you can say you used any art as an implementation to clients. We've implemented this, customized this for our customers. You can put that on your project. You can put that on your CV, on your right. uh, experience. Okay, okay, which is right. very good, yeah. Right, and we have two certifications uh, on NEOT. One is an NEOT certified tester. A tester is primarily, I'll show you here, uh, NEOT certified developer and tester. Tester is one who knows how to use the tool how can they um, you know implement it for any customer a developer is someone who knows how to customize it how the code works behind the framework what the you know basically coming up with integrating with any other solutions and so on that's what a developer can do so, so, so it's like the heap, the stack the heap and the stack memory on it Okay, you know what happens behind the scenes. Hmm, sorry, sorry, okay. we're going into long conversation here, team. It's just oh, going on. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, that's fine. You're fine, Ibrahim. Thank you. Anyone else, team? Yeah, actually, I'm not clear with that. Actually, like a J meter and APM testing, mobile testing, like that will be different codes or like a, it's like it's a training or how it's an online training or how it works. Otherwise, we need to read the record assessments, how it works. I'm not clear in that part. Who's this, please? Lata, API testing and Lata, those. Okay. All right. So but let in me depth, see. In depth, not like a high level. Okay. If you want to see, see again, to the what is topic. in depth? Can you tell me, Lata, please? Can you explain me what is in depth? No, no. You mean? Like generally, like uh, for example, if you do J meter, the, the course will be like two weeks, like that. No, like we have, what the two three days is enough for J meter? Will, you think? So two weeks, you think J meter you'll master? I'm not sure actually. Hmm. So that's the problem. Okay. Now see, data driven, keyword driven, hybrid, POM, PF is a common approach. Edge factory. <laughs> I can use that for web, for API, a little bit on JMeter, okay. a lot on mobile app also. Mm -hmm. So in the training, I may only spend, this or not our team here, maybe I'll mm -hmm. use the next column, two hours on this, two hours on oh, this, okay. two hours on this. Okay. In the live project, you will spend 40 hours on this. Wow, 40 yes. hours on this. Two days. 40 of... hours on this. Mm -hmm. You will not leave a single stone unturned in the project. That is going in depth. And in between, you will be teaching us rather than we teaching you in that. When okay. we have our project charter and a goal clear as to what we want to do. Now I know what J meter does in the two hours. We know the potential of it. We know the basics of it. Mm -hmm. How can we integrate and create it into our project? Implement it, execute it. That's going to take us 40 hours. How can we include it in our product? Another 10 hours, maybe like that. 
so that is where we will master something t correct unfortunately yeah. i would i would love to take it two weeks like if uh, maybe a 20 hour program on api testing alone i don't mind it but it's just that um, we have 30 tools right now let's finish this overall a lot of tools might be like that ci cd one hour git github github gitlab three uh, four hours jenkins two hours devops two hours amazon aws three hours azure three hours so uh, just a DevOps, the DevOps alone is quite a lot because the DevOps entails Docker, container, Kubernetes, <laughs> and so much. <laughs> so it's like. Um, I, this is minimal. And okay, okay, what okay. I've done is a very deep research into the QA job market okay. in the last six months. And I have been interfacing with a lot of people in the QA industry. These are the most regular skills. And beyond this, people are asking us a lot more. It's true, yeah. Like domain knowledge and so on. If you think that any of the skills people are not usually asking, then we don't have to spend so much time. Now, this is almost all the skills that they ask if you for automation. Yeah. 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 Either API or uh, JMeter or Postman, Selenium yep. or Agile. It's just a mixture of each. So if you know everything, then you are you are star of the you stand out. You, you know. stand out. You and the point anywhere. also for us is to present it correctly in the resume. Otherwise, your sure. resume may never get selected. What is the point if That's I have all the skill and I'll never get the chance for an interview? Yeah, it's true. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, and team, it's it's believe me, I've been doing this. When I did not know certain thing, it looked like a big white elephant to me. I did not know how to handle it. I did not know what to do with it. Even Jenkins. But when my projects demanded that I had to do, do, do work on them, I had to build that capability. And then I felt, wow, this is so simple. This is so easy. Why didn't someone teach me this way? And that is why I teach, because this better way to learn team. It's very simple, one after the other, nicely structure it, keep going. <laughs> and Karasik, as as yes. you are you are in the mm -hmm. class, uh, when you start like you get you start working a little bit, and you might find you be giving project challenges. If you're facing problem, can you bring it to the group or to the JPACT for help? Oh yeah, love to. And that okay. By the way. Uh, my all the life the the client projects that I do, yeah. My JPAC members also work on them. Okay, okay. Yes. So we also discuss on them in our JPAC calls. Okay. So we have Enyot being implemented, and all those implementation customizations, enhancements, issues, everything goes through us. So it's almost like a daily thing that we have it. There's been a gap for about two weeks now, but otherwise we'll start again soon. Hi, Karthik, this is Lata again. Like mm -hmm. SOAP UI is not much into the market, or we need to learn SOAP UI also. The rest, ready API. Yeah, SOAP UI um, is quite popular, you're right. <laughs> it is popular, but not as much because world is moving on to more API based. JSON and so on. Okay. In Ready API, we have JSON, no? It's not just the format, the way the API system itself is working behind. Okay. JSON is extraction data, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a very simple, nice way of uh, storing data, JavaScript object not, not, notation. And it's very nice. It's, it's, it's different from XML. It looks more like um a key value pair metrics so it's so that's why it, api will become so easy to understand what are we doing yeah. sending requests getting responses how do we measure yeah, get, that uh, delays yeah authentication and, uh, and thing I just whatever wanna... postman is doing yeah. we are building a tool exactly like postman to put it into any art that's what okay, we work amazing, on yeah. yes it's very simple. 
postman is amazing tool i mean we can't do everything postman does but the key features but it technically takes is quite extensive on postman or uh, java api no not at all okay <laughs> and also talk, talking about java um do you need to because it's kind of you have to learn a lot like abstraction encapsulation polymorphism functions objects do you do we go through all that because is that what that would take you so much so many ages with practicals with skill trained before you be able to enter into the web driver itself automation it's it's actually <laughs> um i would say it is more for an interview level okay and okay. not really an automation tester level All they right. fight with you know interview panels to stop doing that so nice so this trouble. is the previous okay. java training that i did oh, where hash maps, okay. plan, we we did everything we went through wow. everything in about Can't two hours, that. three hours, I want to go through and run every file, walk through every bit of code, and kind of speak about it. So you get the idea. When we go into implementation, we'll keep on enhancing that skill. All right, okay. But even OOPS to a large extent, we, we use OOPS to a certain extent. We don't need too much of everything. <laughs> okay, it's true. With automation, you're just testing anyway. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not it's not like I'm building a banking application. Backend. I'm not building a secure <laughs> banking application. <laughs> yeah. I'm building a secure, I'm building a simple application that 10 of my QA engineers can use. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been told by a colleague that even the kind of things we learn things so much that when you start working, the frameworks uh, automation is not being built. It's a new concept. Many companies are not even have not even fully built framework. They're just starting. So you end up you've learned so much and you are not going to utilize it straight away. So it's just have an idea. And many companies will even train you on certain things. So mm. when you are trained away training, I mean you come out, you are mostly ahead. <laughs> that's true uh, and a colleague and, told me who works in data yeah last five six years the roi on maximum number of automation projects has been very bad okay. very bad so and that's why everyone wants the same thing they want a good framework and when they put the job requirements it's so funny when they say java or python or c sharp or javascript any coding language, Selenium or UFT or robot frame, anything. Like, I don't know, as if they have not decided yet. Yeah, because so the friend said, I will be shocked at what happens in big companies. Not that they are so good, or it's just yeah. not the newly implementing things now, trying what to implement. So uh, it's best to have a big understanding. And if you prepare your skill sets, you, you just be much more comfortable when they're going great tough. And, anyway. and what I see is a big difference is the way we speak about our skill sets with what confidence. When we really put our hands on and, you know, spend a few midnight uh, midnights on that, a few tasks that are breaking our head, we really then feel that energy to speak about it as well. Energy, and that's yeah, very, very... Job, uh, it's true, but when I started it, because you list so called concept, comma, Kelly breezes, you know, mm -hmm. space and this. But yeah. then when I started playing with it, <laughs> it took me weeks and months. But then I realized it's not something that bad. It's just a concept. Play with it so many times and, uh, Correct. and then Correct. move on with it. That's what I realized. But then when you get somebody who is very skillful, who can mentor you, it makes mm -hmm. your journey very easy. They can just pinpoint to you like what interface to download, what um, libraries to work with. Yeah. And uh, if you even a library can hold you up for weeks if you don't get a proper library. But when you get somebody to just train you straight, it makes your journey easy. And uh, uh, that's why a project, every project 
automation project requires a very good architect yeah that architect is the one who's a tools expert who's a methodology expert who's an implementation yeah. expert then they know or they will find a solution for us so in two three projects you can become an architect that is Amazing. the craze in the market today wow. because there's so many jobs in the skill sets no one they're not able to find great people and the skill sets are few is true <laughs> correct and That's because true. eight years if someone has spent in qa and they've done just qa where is the list of all these tools that they've not done then how will they even get anything yeah. here they only know here they're experts in this scrum um, methodologies the most, the most yeah, yeah that's yeah. it Done. that's the most popular <laughs> yeah that's sure. it 90 percent are still here in the market yeah few people yeah, are saying okay i'll do some id people you know, are some... scared of java so the moment you learn information with java you are very popular uh, people are so scared they feel it's difficult so it's just few people yeah. So the market I'm sorry, is demanding. Ibrahim, I have to cut you short. I'm just checking with the others also. Hi everyone. Sorry, we've been just talking. Uh, yeah. I'm cutting just to summarize um, the live projects also included in this uh, package, right? This live project for 40 hours, something like you have mentioned, like all the assignments as well as these projects also included in here. So JPAC is a little different. It requires a lot of time and effort from your side, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what we I haven't yet given the assignments and so on. The so lot will come to you now. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll JPAC members will go through a different thing altogether. So that'll be different projects. Where is it that I wanted to show you something? Um, what was it looking at? Yeah, go dot it learn. So team, please do that quiz. Please ensure you all log in and complete the quiz here. Just to recap, and I'm going to make sure that every three, four topics will summarize them with some quizzes. That way, our coverage is good. And all the lectures, notes by day, I'm trying to keep them here so you can access it here. Uh, why does it say complete and continue? Why can't I see? Are you able to see this team? Lectures, notes by day? I am uh, showing on my screen. It's showing on your screen. Maybe you need to log in. OK, that's good if it's showing on your screen. All right. Thank you, everyone. I Patrick, wish I could I speak just, more. Yes. I just have one last question uh, for the JPEG mm -hmm. member. You talked about that there will be a project live project. So the mm -hmm. client project as well. So can we show those client project on our resume? absolutely yes i've got okay. a green signal from this client also because okay. what is happening is we're delivering a very large project with minimal resources so right. they know that we're using our it learn interns and jpac members to help us execute them okay, you can also show you. the in your project okay. in your projects and the client projects on that and uh, will you be able to help with our resume to build in it like as you, a big man. I, I will okay i will guide you i will lead you you will work on it yourself a lot okay. i will review with you i will give you feedbacks will do at least we can do two three mock interviews all right okay Thank and you. the two three mock interviews you should split it at least in four to six weeks because each mock interview will give you a lot of inputs on what you need to do further it'll take you another one two weeks to improve and so on all right, all right. thank you so it's a little journey team. It'll take you about two, three months in JPAC. Apart from training, you'll keep on working on certain things. And even after the training, as the year goes, you can continue to participate. New projects, old projects, and so on. What is CICD full form? Is CICD is continuous integration and continuous deployment or continuous delivery. So where with, you know, once in six months, if we have to do something, we don't really need to automate that process. 
if I have to do a big thing every two weeks, the same, same repeated thing, then I should do a lot of automation. So GitHub Jenkins will come there. All right, thank you everyone. Have a great weekend and I'll see you all back next week, Monday. Bye now. Thank you so much. Uh, so the next class is next week, is that right? Is that uh, Monday? Monday, Monday okay. 5 the same time. Specific time. The That'll same time. Tuesday for you, I think. Okay, yes. is it the same time? Okay, the same, same time. time here. 5 oh, p.m. Then. You'll get your reminders also. It's 3 a.m. here anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, uh, it's, it's part of the sacrifice anyway. So. I'm I'm uh, so happy to you. hear this. Mm, bye now. Bye everyone. Bye team.